गुड आफ्टरनून एवरी वन आय एम डॉक्टर करुणा अगवने हेड ऑफ द रेडियोलॉजी डिपार्टमेंट इन रुबी हेल्थ केअर सर्व्हिसेस प्रायव्हेट लिमिटेड ऍट डॉक्टर आर एन कुपर हॉस्पिटल आय एम गोईंग टू टेक अ शॉर्ट टॉक ऑन द एच आर सी टी टेम्पोरल बर्न अनाटमी हिअर हिअर इज द स्किमॅटिक व्ह्यू ऑफ द ह्युमन इयर वेअर वी कॅन सी एक्सटर्नल ऑडिटरी कनॉल इज सेपरेटेड फ्रॉम द मिडल इयर कॅव्हिटी बाय अ थिन टिम्पॅनिक मेमरेन विच इज अटॅच टू द हँडल ऑफ द मॅलियस मॅलियस देन इन आर्टिक्युलेट्स विद द इनकस then to the stapes through the oval window to the inner ear structures and then exit through the round window this green structure is the facial nerve the labyrinthine segment and then the tympanic segment going posteriorly to the mastoid as we all know middle ear has six walls anteriorly formed by the carotid canal and there is a bony separation between the internal carotid artery and the middle ear also anterior inferior wall contains the opening of the eustachian tube and attachment to the tensor tympani muscle posterior wall is formed by the mastoid and mastoid air cells medially there is a bony bulge called the promontory which is formed by the basal turn of the cochlea also the location for the oval and the round window is also visible on the medial wall then the laterally it is limited by the tympanic membrane superiorly the roof is formed by the bone called tegment tympani which separates it from the middle cranial fossa and floor is formed by the jugular plate and below that we have the internal jugular vein now we will go through the stack of sections axial hrct temporal bone images from superior to inferior direction here you can see these are the air locules separated by these bony trabeculae called the mastoid air cells going further down we see the mastoid air cells again the same now here we see the first structure from the inner ear that is the superior portion of the superior semicircular canal if you can observe it is separating into the anterior and posterior limbs mastoid air cells continue this triangular portion of the bone is nothing but your petrous bone again the anterior and posterior limbs and here is the aperture called the internal auditory meatus which then opens into the internal auditory canal this canal carries our 7th and 8th nerve complex anteriorly there is a facial nerve and cochlear nerve posteriorly we have superior and inferior vestibular nerves here the large air locule is seen which is nothing but the mastoid antrum again you can see anterior superiorly there is exit for the facial nerve and this portion is called the labyrinthine segment which then takes acute turn to form the tympanic segment or the horizontal part of the facial nerve this part is called the geni or the geniculate ganglion of the facial nerve here again you see the semicircular canal and a small bony tip is seen here in the epitympanum which is nothing but the head of the malleus now if i go one section below yes i can see the head of the malleus articulating with this incus and this epitympanum is communicating with the mastoid antrum through the aditus and the antrum and this forms a figure of eight appearance on the axial sections here again you can see the exit for the vestibular nerve and this is the vestibule this is the lateral semicircular canal this is part of the posterior semicircular canal and this is your cochlea again you can see the tympanic segment of the facial nerve in the epitympanum region these are the mastoid air cells again continuing the same lateral semicircular canal facial nerve vestibule cochlea going down you can see exit for the cochlear nerve towards the cochlea and this central bony part is called the modulus around which these turns of the cochlea are seen this thin linear channel which is communicating with the csf here is nothing but your vestibular duct again the cochlea vestibule and anterior inferiorly now you can see this air filled linear structure which is your eustachian tube and alongside a par parallel soft tissue is your tensor tympani muscle going further down i can see along the posterior wall there is a bony prominence called the pyramidal eminence this separates the sinus tympani and the facial recess two bony structures seen here are nothing but your malleus anteriorly posteriorly the incus going little up again here 
you can see that incus communicating with the stapes here this is the anterior crust posterior crust and foot plate which is communicating with the oval window and to the basal turn of the cochlea and again and posterior inferiorly if you see there is a small air filled locule here alongside the basal turn of the cochlea is your round window so oval window is located at the foot plate of the stapes which is this is your stapes this is your oval window and when I go below, so posterior inferior to that, I have my round window here. And if you see this T, this is the handle of the malleus, which is attached to the tympanic membrane, which is barely visible here. It is a very thin membrane, barely visible on these sections. And here the facial nerve is now vertical in position and this is called the mastoid segment or the vertical segment of the facial nerve which then inferiorly exits through the stylomastoid foramen now coming back to the vascular structures if you can see anterior superiorly we have the carotid canal and posteriorly we have important structure called the jugular bulb here and sigmoid plate containing the sigmoid sinus here the same structures we will go through the coronal sections now anterior to posterior anteriorly we have the tm joint this is the mandibular fossa and this is condyle going posteriorly towards the ear these are the cochlear terms External auditory canal, ear ossicles in the epitympanum. This is the malleus and the incus. Now you can see a bony prominence over here along the lateral margin of this malleus, and there is an air filled gap between the two. This bony prominence is the sputum, and the gap is called the Prusak space, which is important landmark for cholesteatoma. And these are the turns of the cochlea, very well seen on the coronal sections. Again, see, this is the tympanic membrane. Now, this is one of the important uh, appearance, which is called the mermaid appearance on the coronal sections formed by the vestibule, cochlear turns, superior semicircular canal, lateral semicircular canal, and this small thing is the tympanic segment of the facial nerve. This is your internal auditory canal. Epitympanum again. Going posteriorly again, this is your tympanic segment of the facial nerve. This is your round window now very 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 well visualized on the coronal sections these are the mastoid air cells external auditory canal going posteriorly and now the facial nerve becomes vertical and this is the exit called the stylomastoid foramen and if you see here this is the lateral semicircular canal again now the posterior semicircular canal limbs Mastoid tip of the mastoid. A short clip of the MRI C sequence. This is a coronal view. You can see the cochlear turns. This is vestibule and the semicircular canals. Running it again. Internal auditory canal and inner ear structures over here. So MRI is mainly looking for the membranous labyrinth. These are the steel images of the MRI. You can see the cochlear turns. These are the semicircular canals, semicircular canal. This is the axial C sequence showing bilateral internal auditory canals carrying the seven and eight nerves. Seven is located anteriorly, posterior is the eight nerve. And here is the, your cochlea, semicircular canals. This is an oblique sagittal section like this or perpendicular to this. And you can see one, two, three, four, total four dot sign. So first is the facial nerve anterior superiorly, anterior inferior is the cochlear nerve, posterior superior is the superior vestibular and posterior inferior is the inferior vestibular nerves. Few common pathologies to look for here are the Longitudinal fracture. In trauma, we have two kinds of fractures, longitudinal and the transverse. Transverse run perpendicular to the petrous and the longitudinal courses along the plane of the petrous step. 
and temporal bone. Here you can see the vulnerable structures are the middle ear ossicles and genu of the facial nerve. So we have to carefully look for the structures in the trauma cases. Otospongiosis is sponge-like loosen sponge-like bone, which is seen as a loosened C. And the most common location is this. This is called the fistula antefenistrum, which is between the cochlea and the vestibule. And it is just anterior to the stapes foot plate. So in these cases, we have to look for the thickness of the stapes foot plate and the extent of this lucency, the size of the lucency is important, whether it is involving the inner sphere structures or not, patient may present with the conductive hearing loss or mixed hearing loss. Then next is, this is a congenital anomaly where instead of two and a half, we see the one and a half tons of the cochlea associated with Mondini or incomplete partition defects. This is a high riding jugular bulb. This is the axial section where you can see the jugular bulb is almost exposed into the ear. There is no bony wall between the two. Coronal section also showing the bulb is reaching above the level of the ear. Otomastoiditis is soft tissue opacification or the fluid filled spaces in the middle ear and the mastoid air cells associated with the sclerosis plus minus bony erosions. However, the bony erosions most likely favor the cholesteatoma. Here you can see the erosions of the malleus head in the epidemic panel. Thank you so much for your patience and time. I hope you all enjoyed the lecture. Thank you again.